what are we going to do about it? Because I'm looking at sexual based violence. It's like an age old problem. It's been with us. The only reason why we think it's coming out now is because people are not talking about it. So what it is is that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a systemic thing. And if we, need, we want to tackle it, we need to look at it with a whole system approach. And I was speaking with Dr. Ama Boyi, she's a psychiatrist, we the bridge. And we're talking about the fact that we might be missing the men. It's been as much as we are telling the girls we are certain. The men are also probably crying out for help, but they are not telling us as usual. They are crying in their rooms and not coming out to say, help me. Because what we need to be looking at is why are they doing that? Is it just because they want to behave back? Or is it because they are trying to cope with their rules that are sometimes come upon them suddenly they don't know how to cope with being a father, a husband, or trying to be a man in society when they have not been given the coping skills to get there? So these were some of the things I was thinking about. So it is very real, as you have said, but let's look at currently with your role as a medical uh, doctor and also working with the National Health Commission once again. What do you believe are the provisions that the National Health Insurance has for around sexual violence? We realize that in as much as the narrative appears, I think doctors are doing it by, by saying, give us a piece for examining the, 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 the victim. What it is is that the system as it is can be a bit frustrating. So then again, there's the element of abuse as well as the, the element of the gaps in the presentation of policies or the lack of policies, clear policies for people to follow. So when we have a big test who comes to you with a control disease, you technically you have to wear two hats. One, I'm here at the doctor's clinic or you have a problem with that. I'll examine you to run the test I need to run. And for those services, we have a valid national health insurance card. We should cover all those services. Because under the benefit package of the national health insurance scheme, almost 95% like of all the services are covered. So the labs, the consultation, the medication that you have to be given based on the diagnosis that you have made, it should cover. What the national health insurance scheme does not cover for is what the doctor receives at the fee that I should be given in case I'm called to court. Because when the doctor is called to court, he talks about a journey who went down. So the doctor, very much of where you are, you will be at some point to come. You have to go. The court does not really practically pay you. I don't think the court is supposed to. There was another interaction with Peter where there was a trust that would be the court is that it's going to do something. But it's not clear and nobody knows. And then again, there was a kind of, um, there, was a, there was this issue of a domestic violence or sexual violence fund under the Ministry of Gender. That if it was active or when it could be, we could look at that to sort of like get up for some of these things. So, and then another question that came to mind was, and this is like an extreme example, I thought of the image, if I may say, in the archive against and state approach, there was this. The fact that he liked it or not, he knew he had a child man who had an unsafe abortion before he was 28. And to some extent, if they would follow through, it's not possible to have an organization like that. Where well, while the ministry is trying to leave this discussion on getting the railway center, the policy to work, can we have something like that where the victims are not killed? And the ones that go there with my kids, I'm not going to be stigmatized. I'm going to get help. And then I'll be going to go into my kids, to court. And the sanctions are going to be applied. We get the insurance to help us to make the service available because the national health insurance scheme has to have their back. By policy, the national insurance scheme members are not supposed to make these payments. But we see this happening. So, on that side, what is this? Is this an illegal thing? Is it the health that is trying to cope? It, it's also a complex thing. But what I can say is that the National Health Insurance Authority is pretty mobilized, Dr. Benatoku Boy, to fight this issue of unintended out of pocket payment. The Minister of Health is actually very mobilized. I think last week there was a stakeholder engagement with all the 
the players that might have picked up association was the, the medical superintendent were there, um, the teaching hospitals were there, also to discuss this issue and how we can ensure that the people of Ghana get the quality care they need in the health facility without having to make any unintended payments. And then the National Health Insurance Authority has come up with this sunshine policy that actually says that, because you know previously the providers would say we haven't been paid. For that reason, we have to pay it. And we are looking at that. We hope that through this engagement, we can get the providers to understand that the priority is to provide health to the people of Ghana. This is a two basic agendas that are being frustrated. And then also, we don't think we have anybody we can rely on to say this is a lawyer who deals with these cases. So when I come, I will be dealing with this case. If you go to court, is the Republic versus the alleged offender. This tells you that the person, the victim, is a witness of the Republic. So the Republic must bear all the cost. It's assisting the Republic to undertake its work by achieving justice. Because the case at that stage in the criminal matter is not the case of the victim, but the case of the whole state, including you and I. It starts from the police, the law enforcement. We report the matter. And I overheard that uh, when the medical form is issued to victims of sex violence, they go to hospital. They are asked to pay. Yes, that experience is there. Who pays that cost? From the books, it's supposed to be the station, the police station. That's supposed to be if he goes to a registered private practice. If he goes to the government facility, then it's not supposed to be. Because the government facility, together with the police and together with other stakeholders of government character, are pursuing that his person. That's what it is. The government facility, together with the law enforcement agency and other stakeholders of government nature or state color are pursuing that interest. So all of us should come together and beg our cause. Registered practitioner, the money should be funded. Who refunds it? Who pays it? There's a practical challenge and there's a missing link that all of us here should find out whether or not it's paid and who pays it. Now, he goes to government facility. Government facility, he goes there again to pay. Meanwhile, the narrative is that other than the government facility, he goes there and pay. Who pays it? Who refunds it to the victim? So practically, it's a challenge where you issue a medical form to a victim of sexual violence. He goes home to keep the medical form for about two weeks, three weeks. Some don't even come back at all. They don't even come back with the medical form at all. And the police from practice will not also follow you to come and ask of the medical report and not get to be lying down closing and by itself. Can you mind if a chance comes to sit down? The first case is going to take is a hearing in a robbery case or a murder case. This victim comes to sit down to the same court. Then by the time the time is done and call the victim's case, maybe around 1 p.m. From 8.30 to 1 p.m. She's already tired. And that day, by the time it gets to practically, the court may even adjourn the matter. You must go back, maybe live somewhere, he's staying out of back from Accra. He has to come back, come back. You get the frustrated, practically, you get frustrated. But the adjournment, as I sit here, is part of the criminal system. And we can do or reduce it when we create specialized courts. That the creation of a specialized court may reduce this adjournment. But in Accra, I know we have one gender court in Accra Central, it's a circuit court. Then we have this one stop all and the CLA courts. Then what happens to the rangers? What system? What happens there? Maybe the, the, the chief does may designate a particular court for only gender or sexual violence. If that campaign can go down so that in every region 
we have a gender-based call or one-stop call facility. Then it will create because in that one-stop call facility we take care of where the doctor is coming from. To say that when you go there, there's a doctor there, you're not supposed to pay a dime. When you go there, there's a clinical psychologist there, you're not going to pay a dime. In the same facility, there is courts. In the same facility, officers from the legal aid who are lawyers from the legal aid department are attached to that one stop call, taking care of other issues. They are all there, taking helping the system to work. Isn't that this just me? Good to have this adjournment challenge for so long. Thank you very much for helping us to understand the problem. And unfortunately, the problem is not solved. So, how do we move? How do we, how do we, what is the next step from this? How do we begin to pull our hands together to solve the problem? I think this will be my last question to you. Where do we move from here? So, can we go to the capital and then we can back to the So, we might have to change the language. Efforts to include the mess so that it can be put on the agenda setting table so that the discussions can happen around and um, you know setting the policies and then ensuring that the policies are implemented. But otherwise, it's always like a talk. We talk around about it, talk about it all the time, and nothing will be done. But once we get it put on the agenda setting table, then we move on to getting the policies as we are discussing, and then we ensure that. And we actually push for the policies to be implemented. The will, if all the ministries are mobilized, the agenda is interested, health is interested, the police are interested, the law enforcement, the courts, judiciary, everybody is interested, the, the civil society organizations, all the partners, we have your voice and the other people. All talking the same thing, then hopefully we will put our words in action. That's what I think. My last comment will also go to the organizers of this program and all any other person that the issue of payments of fees to doctors and this we cannot fault the doctors, but we should fault the system. The system is what has made it so. A doctor, which I know some doctors, if in that facility they are working, they pay for their own medical bills. Because we work with them every day. Some of us are friends with them, some of us are our clients. Their own facility that they work with. And I believe doctor will attest to that. Uh, some of them pay for their own medical bills. If it's paying for his or her own medical bills, the same facility be in a government or whatever. And you expect that you come with the medical form knowing that his action may be called upon to question the court. He will take the money in order to go to the court. Because reconstruction, I normally call Dr. Pardon me. I normally call uh, your examination as reconstruction. Uh, your reconstruction of the female gender organ. Because we the investigators do what we call reconstruction of crime scene. And that place is also classified as one of the crime scenes. So the doctors are going to do reconstruction to give us the medical and scientific evidence to base our case. So we should prepare to bear until we decide to at least tackle, tackle the system so that we change those things. I think we need to go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that we have shared some reality to why the situation is what it is but it means that there is more work to be done there is more engagement to be held there is more policy agenda setting to be brought on board for those who matter around the issue to sit down there is also the call for it to be a gender issue and not a women and girls issue but the women and girls issue is because our funders were women and girls organization and wanted to know their story but i think this calls for more further international collaboration in order that all can be brought on board to be able to move up to the next level